Okay. Good afternoon and uh, <laughs> welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 496. Getting closer. Um, today's episode is when love at first sight isn't. And I'll speak to that in a moment. Before I do that, let me introduce myself to you so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women create and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which has led me to do these talks for the last uh, couple of years almost now, called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. Actually, Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart, because mostly directed towards women. Although there's some tips and tricks and keys in there about men as well. And today's episode is number 496. So every day, getting close, the first 20 or so weren't, but now it's every day, um, coming, honing in on the 500th broadcast. That may be a big one, who knows? Um, that'll be Sunday, I think. So back to the topic today. So when love at first sight isn't. Um, last night I was doing a dual broadcast with my friend Gina Hendricks. We're doing a Tuesday night, um, Gina and Barry doing it live on air. Um, started last week and this is the second episode this week. So we're going to keep going see how that goes. But last night in the conversation, and we cover quite a lot of content, and if you want to watch that broadcast, it's on my wall last night. One of the things that came up was about um, this first glance, this first look, this love at first sight thing that it's a very romantic thing, but it has some glitches in it, to say the least. So one part of that is we have... Um, I say this a pervasive thinking that when we see somebody we know right away if we love them or not like we go that's the one and and there are instances I know this for sure because I've actually spoken to two friends of mine who've had the experience where they knew at the beginning when they met that person it was love at first sight done done deal it took time to get to that point where they married and got you know had families but they said from the very first moment they laid eyes on each other it was love at first sight so I'm not saying it's a myth but I am saying that it's not always accurate I just want to break this down a little bit and I'll speak selflessly and personally first, just to out myself in this way at the beginning, because actually I did say this last night, so I'm saying it again now. Um, I was saying that I, I, I get the opportunity to be around communities and groups of very attractive people. Um, being in the spiritual path and being in the personal growth and seminars over the years, um, I would say pretty much, I mean, it's one of the best kept secrets, of the, <laughs> to be honest, that most of the seminars and, tra and trainings and receipts I went into, except the ones that were intentionally set up this way, that way I'll get that in a second, there were more women than men there. And a lot of cases were single. So in this area where we're, in, we're doing seminars and workshops to open our hearts, there were more women than men present. So why wasn't my love life thriving? I'll get to that one in a second. The only time where that would change specifically in terms of logistics when I did some of these seminars which were more about the sexual polarity, masculine and feminine piece where the room was divided in half, men and women, it's more equal. Those were specifically set up that way. But what I became aware of, and I'm even more so aware of it now because um, the spiritual community, community I go to, Agape International Spiritual Center, which I go to every Sunday, um, there are some beautiful women there too. And what I've been noticing a lot, especially lately, but it's been going on for a long time, is that I'll see a woman who, at first glance, first sight, is extremely attractive and desirable, and I'm interested in finding out more about that person. However, on second blush, or second pass, as it were, getting to speak to them, get to know them, get to talk to them, and taking away the um, logistical things like she might be married or something like that, whether actually are single and available, because, you know, there are attractive women who are married, surprise, surprise, and there are attractive women who are gay, surprise, surprise. So that's, so taking those out of the equation for now, single women who are meet who are also going to the spiritual community, so they are awake and aware, supposedly, that's another conversation. I might get to that. Meeting these women who are very attractive, and then as I get to know them by having conversations and spending time looking into, looking face to face, eye to eye, I notice that the initial like, whoa, wow, softens. That that whoa, wow feeling actually goes away. And I look at them and go, yeah, they're attractive, but I'm not attracted to them. And that's a very clear differentiation, by the way. There's, <laughs> there's a caveat I want to speak about. This is again from last night's broadcast. Gina, who's a matchmaker, she's very good at what she does and she has a big business. 
um, elite, elite introduction thing her branding is. If you watch the video from last night, you can find out more about her. But she had a thing about playing about, about it being a numbers game, which I have a big issue with. So let me be clear. I'm not a fan of the numbers game. And what she was suggesting, which is what a lot of people talk about, is you have to get out and date more, and meet more people, because then you might meet somebody who matches. Which sounds wonderful in, in theory, but in practice it can be very draining. And I believe, personally, it isn't about um, dating multiple people, lots and lots of people. In fact, I'd say it's more about dating individuals selectively to get refined. And you basically date somebody who is close to what you want, and then as you get to know them better, you'll see what doesn't work and does work. And you may decide this, doesn't, this relationship doesn't go, work, doesn't go any further from a few dates. And then you can regroup and go, okay, so now I know better what I'm really looking for. Refine the list, refine the list, and then go for that, that intention. So getting back to the love at first sight piece, there is, and it happens a lot in the spiritual community, I would suggest, and I've not done any research, so I may be wrong, but I suggest that in the spiritual communities or personal growth arenas, in the, work, in the industries where there are a lot of heart opening and expansion and elevation and growth happening, it's very tempting to look at somebody and go right away, that's the person. I have a caveat on that. I've experienced for myself times where I met somebody where what I saw at the beginning was amazing, but what happened afterwards didn't. And in fact, reversing that, where somebody had that about me, just to be totally transparent, this going back to 2005, 2006, I was volunteering at, uh, at two different places, actually, spiritual organizations, and I was in leadership roles. And this woman was so um, impassioned about me <laughs> that she asked me out. We actually went out and we were in a relationship for a while. And, and the relationship was great. It was great, very passionate, great sex. But this was one of the biggest lessons I had about the polarity being reversed, which is another, that's another topic. But this love at first sight thing, she was so immediately attracted to me. But the challenge was after we got together for a while, what she thought she saw in me wasn't the truth. So she'd be running a, a not so much a fantasy, but an illusion of who I was. And I wasn't that at the time. I am now, but too late. <laughs> but at the time, I wasn't that. And so she was holding a vision of what I was going to be. And we went into a relationship a few months in. She was like, well, hang on a second. You're not who I thought you were. I didn't change. But she had a preconceived notion. So I love at first sight mechanics oftentimes are looking through a filtered lens, like a risk of spectacles. We see what we think we're going to see. Or we think what we want to see. And we don't actually see the truth. And so oftentimes we'll choose relationships where what we discover in the relationship is nothing like what we wanted because we had this, um, these lenses on that were actually inaccurate because that what they were teaching us or sure what they presented to us was what we wanted to see, not what was real. So a lot of times I think love at first sight is a fantasy-based vision that isn't based on reality. Yes, I'm being that blunt about it. So when you look a second time, and this is why I recommend highly if you meet somebody get to know them but really clearly get to know yourself in the process are you being caught up in a, in a um, hormonal emotional maelstrom of ideas versus you seeing clearly and that's for the women more than that because we may not generally as caught up in the emotional and um, hormonal excitement but we still have our own um, what's the word I'm looking for turn-ons <laughs> but the challenge with us for us men is the same thing is that when we get turned on to meet someone who's amazingly sexy, attractive, and everything else, but then we have a five minute conversation and realize that she's nothing like what we want to be with. Now, some men don't care about that. I do. But, ladies, when you meet men, you might get a personality assumption about that person because of the way they look, they dress, they present themselves. But the reality is, they may not be that. So, my, my solution, my invitation um, is like, do your homework. And part of that is, is don't base your whole like, relationship possibility on that one meeting or that one glance or that one swipe or that one click depending on which version which way you're going to find this person so I hope this is making sense a couple of things I want to throw in there as well um, there's like three topics that came through that are actually going to be for other times and I'll have to review this to find them this dance of relationship the challenge of relationship is finding somebody we want to be compatible with but it helps helps the wrong word it requires you to know you're compatible in the first place meaning that your vision your intention your desires know what they are because it is sometimes conflicting inside when you have a desire to meet somebody like this person a 
but the challenge you, you to meet person, person B, who's actually the better person choice. But because you've got your um, your ducks aren't all in a row, so to speak, your vision is not clear, you're being driven by something maybe more base or something more fantasy based versus what's real. So my advice, my suggestion, my invitation to you is to first of all take your time. There is no rush, there's no hurry. And to really, in a way, almost be clinical about how you meet somebody and see them. You want to do your best to disengage your hormones and your excitement, because that shows up for all of us, the excitement part, and look at this person as, as clear as you can to know who they are, not what you think they are, because you're running your own programs. And again, this is one of those traps you fall into, is we run our fantasies on somebody, and then six months into the relationship, there's going to be something opposite, and we end up regretting everything that happened, which, can, which is a challenge. So the more that we are in a place where we choose from a place of clarity versus the delusional, illusional fantasy, then the better chance are we meet somebody we want to be with. But again, that temptation to run that fantasy, that illusion, and then have that, that love at first sight syndrome running is a trap. So getting clear about what you want the right way, getting clear about what you want from a clear place, and getting clear about your want, what you want whilst you're single, that's another part by the way, get your vision clear first before you meet somebody. Because sometimes we get this this, um, this trap, this feeling that somehow we're going to, um, well, for some of the ladies, the night shining arm is going to ride up on his on his stat, white stallion and, and scoop us up and ride up in the sunset with us and we'll be very happy, happily ever after. And the guy shows up in his white Ferrari and you go, this must be the guy. May not be. So my point, again, is get clear about what you want really. What's your everyday relationship going to be like? Not the fantasy of the um, romantic meeting but the reality of the relationship you want to have because you may want to go on lots of first dates with men that can be really fun and exciting because you won't go beyond that but then again you might want to get clear about what you really want and start with a vision and intention of what really aligns for you so that when you meet somebody you go yes that works that's wonderful let's have some fun or you might meet somebody go that's a lot of pizzazz but no action no no depth to that there's um to, to reference something from a long time ago i shared this a while ago I was in a, bun in a bunch of postal growth seminars back in the 80s and 90s, and one of the biggest um, lessons I got one of the seminars was about this understanding about form versus essence. I'll explain what it means quickly. We were in a process where we had to, to communicate with the, between groups a message or a, a word sometimes or a feeling without using actual verbal talking. We actually would use um, various components. We had, I think, at that time we had um, building blocks, we had the people in the group, we had a couple other accessories, and we had to use all those, any combination of those to present that message or that word. And the group, and, and the committee that was watching, the group, the other people who were the committee watching them, had hopefully to get what that word was. And the thing is, we didn't know necessarily what the word was beforehand. So it wasn't like we had a list of three words to choose from. So they had to communicate what they were expressing and we had to get it, non-verbally. And the lesson I kept getting that was, how do we communicate who we are without saying a word? as in how to express our essence without having to put the form of words around it. Because when we're in a place where we put our true expression through um, who we are energetically, then when you're on your first dates, you might find something much more attractive and be more attracted to that person because you're doing the same thing, you're being in a centered place. So it's making sense. This is, this is a big stuff to play with, but I'm not suggesting in terms of the dating arena that rather than having a certain, for the men especially you should know this, the essence, the, this this pattern of like, well, I have this car and this life, this, this this lifestyle. Who are you inside? How do you stand in your truth and present who you are so that when you meet somebody, they go, I know you now. I can feel who you are. I can trust that. This one's for the men, actually. I'm realizing more and more. So ladies, when you're out meeting men, find a man that makes you feel safe. Find a man that makes you feel excited. Not scared, but excited. And, they fi and find a man that you feel like you can lean on. He won't collapse under you or run away or argue or fight or any of that stuff that's another piece of the puzzle by the way all right i'm gonna wrap this up because i've actually got to go i have a dinner date tonight um with my with my publishing partner we we in case you didn't know the love revolution book was published yesterday came out and so we're going for dinner to celebrate tonight because we deserve it it's been a long journey so many months on this um so i'll put a link to the book by the way in the comments because i want you to check it out um the book's called love revolution and it came out yesterday, so you better order it now. A um, couple of things I was going to say. 
if you're in a place where you're stuck in the area of relationships, I do have an, an invitation to have a chat with me. And I'll put the link in the comments, which is basically um, a discovery session with me. You can sign up there very easily. Go to barryselby.com forward slash chat, and you can sign up right there. Um, this is my Facebook Live. So in case you've been watching this on YouTube, it started there. And if you want to watch the rest of my Facebook Lives, you can find them on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And if you want to watch them on YouTube, they end up over there as well. And my YouTube channel is Barry Selby, or the username is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. So thank you, Nan. Appreciate that. Congrats on the book. And you're welcome to those insights. Again, if you want help and you've got personal challenges, reach out to me. That's what I'm here, that's what I'm here for. Um, so YouTube channel, Messages from the Masculine is the playlist. Barry Selby is the channel. Also, my podcast is now growing. I'm putting my replays in audio format there. We can download them. And by the way, subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. And you can subscribe to my podcast, which is Messages from the Masculine on iTunes. Um, and that's it, I think. I appreciate you watching. And if you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them in the comments below. After I sign off, I will respond. I'll put the links in for the book and for a discovery session if you want to find out how to work with me. And uh, consider for yourself what you really want. What moves you in a relationship? What inspires you in a relationship? What do you really want? So when you go out in your life and you meet people, you'll know when it resonates or not. That's probably one of the biggest keys I can give you. I've got a few more though. With that, thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same back channel, 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here tomorrow at the same time. I said that three times now, it's enough. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you later. Bye.